Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving another locus problem. So we have a complex number Z that satisfies this equation. We're going to find all the Z values that satisfy this equation, which is the real part of Z plus 2 divided by Z minus 1 equals 4. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at this equation and notice that Z cannot equal 1 because then that's going to give you an undefined expression, right? So if you don't want z to be 1, just pay attention to that because you'll see in a little bit. Now, to be able to solve this problem, and since this is a locus problem and the name of this channel is a plus b i, I'm going to go ahead and replace z with x plus y i. When you do that, you're going to get the following. Let's go ahead and write this as a fraction and we're going to do a little bit of work on that. So forget about the RE for now or the real part. Z plus 2 is going to be X plus YI plus 2. And as Z minus 1 is going to be X plus YI minus 1. Now we can go ahead and write this as X plus 2 plus YI. And the bottom one we can write as X minus 1 plus YI. Let's go ahead and separate the real and imaginary parts so we can see better what to do. And in this case, you would multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, which is x minus 1 minus yi. And you can kind of clearly see the real and imaginary parts here. And then, of course, by the same thing, right? So that's what we're supposed to do. When you multiply the denominators, you get a sum of two squares. Remember when we multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, we get a squared plus b squared. It's difference of two squares with i squared, which is negative 1. That's why it turns into a sum. So, but what about the top? For the top, we must do a lot of distribution, right? But let me tell you something. When you distribute this, let's go ahead and call this number something, by the way. How about w? We're given that real part of w is equal to 4. From here, we're going to find the locus. Which number satisfy this, okay? So, let's go ahead and do this then. Let's write this number in the simplest form. So, we're supposed to multiply x plus 2 plus yi by x minus 1 minus yi. By the way, I don't need parentheses, but it was just there. Divided by x minus 1 squared plus y squared. This is our number. We want the real part of this. So, we kind of need to distribute the numerator. And then take the real part divided by the denominator. Make sense? So anytime you have something like a plus bi divided by c, basically this can be written as a over c plus b over ci, and the real part just becomes a over c. So this real part divided by the denominator. Make sense? But what is the real part? What is this going to look like? Just Let's just talk about it real quick. Let me give you, without further ado, the real part of w is just going to be x squared plus y squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 1 squared plus y squared. That is going to be our real part and we want this to equal what? 4, right? Awesome. Where do we go from here? Here's what we're going to do. Simplify the denominator and then write it as x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared, and that's equal to 4. And guess what the next step is going to be? Cross multiplication. Let's do it. x squared plus y squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 4x squared minus 8x plus 4 plus 4y squared. Something interesting is going to happen. Let's go ahead and finish this up because I'll show you something. Graphs, okay? So, Let's go ahead and put the x squared, y squared, everything on the right hand side because that's where we get more x squared and y squared. So subtracting is going to give, is going to give us 3x squared, these two, and then 3y squared, these two, right? And now we're going to bring the negative 3x over, but that's a negative 8x plus a 3x. That's going to be minus 5x. And then we have a 4 minus 2 because that's going to come out as a minus, and that'll be a positive 2 and this is equal to zero. So far so good? Great. Now one thing to notice is that the coefficient of x squared and y squared 
the coefficients are the same. That's nice. The second thing that's nice is we don't have an xy term. Because think about it. rotation of axes, conics. Yeah, that's going to be complicated stuff. So we're good. Now let's go ahead and make the coefficients of x squared and y squared 1. Divide both sides by 3. Everything by 3. It's going to be 5 over 3x plus 2 thirds equals 0. So here's what I want to do. I want to arrange these terms a little bit. Put the x's together. x squared minus 5 over 3x. And then I want to go ahead and find the number I'm supposed to add to complete the square. And that you can find easily if you just consider the coefficient of x. By the way, you don't have to worry about the negative sign because this is always positive. You consider the coefficient of x. What is half of that? 5 over 6. And then you need to square that. So the number you need to add is 25 over 36. But of course, you can't just add a number. You also have to subtract it, right? So these two balance out and give you zero at the end. So we're in good shape. This is equal to zero. Great. Here's the greatest part. This whole thing here is actually going to be a perfect square. And we can write it as x minus 5 over 6 squared. Now these two, when we make a common denominator, let's say multiply by 12, and multiply by 12. This is going to be 24 minus 25 over 36, which is negative 1 over 36. But I can put it on the other side as positive 1 over 36. You see that? It's pretty cool, right? Now, here's what we have. We have perfect square equals a number. Oops, I forgot to add the y squared, obviously, along the process. I'm like, what? Is I'm not solving an equation. Plus y squared equals 1 over 36, right? So... We got ourselves a nice equation. And obviously, we should have a y squared here too. Let me add that at the end. Okay, so equation is balanced. Now, take a look at this expression. Does that remind you x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared? If it does, then guess what? This is a circle. So this is a circle too. What kind of circle are we talking about? A circle with center 5 over 6 comma 0 this is the center and the radius is 1 over 6 because radius must be squared makes sense so that's the locus it's a circle but let's go ahead and take a look because there's something interesting about this circle now there are two kinds of graphs one is wolfram alpha which is this sometimes it's uh, more convenient and this is from desmos one thing i want you to notice is there's an open dot. Of course, Desmos doesn't do it automatically, so I have to manually do it. No big deal. But there's an open dot on 1 because z cannot be 1, can it? No way, right? Because if z is 1, then the real part of an undefined number is 4. That's not going to work. But what about the other point? This seems to be, because the center was 5 over 6, remember? 5 over 6 minus 1 over 6, which is 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds is supposed to be a solution, right? So here's the problem. If you plug in two thirds and simplify that expression, because in this case, you're talking about a real number. When we're on the real axis, it's a real number. There seems to be two real values. One of them works. One of them doesn't work. We know that. And we're checking two thirds. And the real part of this number, let's see, this is going to be eight thirds. And it's going to be negative one third. In the, at the end, it's going to be negative eight. So how can the real part of negative eight B4, that's not true. So actually, if you are very careful, you can find out the answer, but I'm going to leave it open. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.